Hi everyone, hope you're having a good Friday. So what I'll do in this video is go through this LLM hallucination index, this RAG special report by Galileo. And Galileo is a company, they do a lot of really cool work around LLM evaluations. I get a lot of questions in my trainings and in my consulting engagements on how to mitigate hallucination. I actually talk about this a lot on X and different platforms. And I write about this problem of hallucination, how we address it using approaches like prompt engineering and even using other more advanced methods such as fine tuning. So in this report, basically they try to assess the landscape of all these LLMs and how they perform on different tasks related to RAG use cases. And in particular, they're measuring how good these models are, how good they perform at RAG. The idea of RAG is basically to provide model this additional context. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of how to build a retrieval augmented generation system, because this particular video will be more about the report and some of the interesting results that they are highlighting. But before I do that, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's get right into it. So the first thing is, this is a report basically assessing lots of these closed source models and open models and comparing them on a bunch of tasks related to RAG. So you can use RAG for all kinds of use cases, right? You may have like, for instance, uh, books, you may have like lots of PDFs, you may even have something like a menu, which is shorter form text. So you're performing RAG and they perform very differently, right? And Questions that may arise is what is the model that I should be using? If I have a use case where I'm not using a lot of PDFs, for instance, as an example, which model should you use? And I think this particular report helps to provide some guidance around that. And this is why I wanted to highlight it in this video. Now they define different tasks or rag related tasks that they are approaching here. And those three are short context, medium context, and long context. For shorter context, you have less than 5k tokens. So this would be the equivalent to RAG on a few pages. So you have medium context, which is 5k to 25k tokens. That's equivalent to RAG on a book chapter. And then you have the longer context, which is 40k to 100k tokens, which is equivalent to performing RAG on an entire book. Yeah, or it could be hundreds of PDFs. And I know that there are some documents that are you know 100 plus pages. So that's is what it is referring to. So they have done some analysis here. They talk about this context adherence, which is what they're using to measure factual accuracy and close domain hallucinations, which means the models say things that were not provided in the context data. So that is what they're looking at specifically. So you can read more about the evaluation metrics specifically and also the evaluation method chain poll here. They also mention the type of task. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the type of task here, but basically the summary is they're focusing on short context RAG, which are all these benchmarks. These are common benchmarks or popular ones that are used. And then there are other, some proprietary data sets that they're using as well. And then they have this medium context RAG, which will be like documents, right? Like 10K documents of a company divided into chunks and so on. So that's basically how they are thinking about experimenting. They talk about chain poll here. So it's 10 closed source models, it's 12 open source models, and three specific RAG tasks. And this is the trends that they're finding. So the first one is open source is closing the gap. And this is not a surprise. In fact, I think the four main findings here are not surprising, especially for someone that me that has been doing a bit of research in this space for quite some time and have been following the trends. I think this is very close and similar to what I've been uh, researching on. So open source is closing the gap. As we know, now we have models like Lama 3.1405B and even the 70B. And I heard that 8B is also very powerful. And yeah, for sure, it's closing the gap. And in particular, right, we care about the performance, uh, but we might also care about the efficiency of that model as well. So this is something they mentioned here too. They were surprised to find models that perform particularly well with extended context lens without losing quality or accuracy, which reflects how far model training and architecture has come. A few months back, I believe, when folks were trying to extend the context windows of these models, of these large language models, now the models, they can be successfully extended, right, in terms of context lens, but that didn't guarantee performance. 
And apparently these models are becoming a lot better today at understanding information, understanding context, and so on. So with that context length also comes effectiveness as well, right? Performance, accuracy, so that is what it is mentioning here. And the third one here, larger is not always better. So what this means is that you can also leverage like smaller models too. And some smaller models are now outperforming larger models. This is a trend that we are seeing across the board. This is not just for rag specific tasks. This is happening everywhere else as well. And they mentioned here that, for example, Gemini 1.5 Flash 001, outperform larger models, which suggests that efficiency in model design can sometimes outweigh scale. And I think this would be an interesting one to, or an interesting trend to keep monitoring because a lot of the recent announcements, if you notice, are releasing these bigger models, but these bigger models can be used for specific use cases and won't really apply to all the use cases. And so one of the use cases that was mentioned in the past couple of weeks from different companies is this idea of using these bigger models to create more effective smaller models. So doing some type of distillation. Also, there was this idea of quantizing models, which is a different topic, which wasn't mentioned here, but I think that's interesting. But that's talking about efficiency, right? the efficiency of these models, and especially the small models are catching up really quickly to the bigger ones as well in terms of performance. So at some point, we're going to ask, do we actually really need scale, right? Is scale all we need? That's an important question. But I think it's very early to say that based on the experiments and the results that I'm seeing from all the research that is happening in the space. But I think this is an exciting development that we're seeing these smaller models actually catching up with bigger ones. And that's a really cool trend. Fourth one here is Anthropic outperforms OpenAI. You know, this might not come as a surprise to a lot of people. In fact, there was a lot of debates and arguments about the LMSYS you know, arena chatbot arena and how these models were comparing there. There was a lot of you know, back and forth online about OpenAI models surpassing Entropic, but Entropic models feel a lot better. When you do a vibe test, you feel like Entropic models are actually better at certain tasks when compared to OpenAI models. So I think it's good to have this sort of report and go through the details on what do we mean by better. Is it better in terms of cost? Is it better in terms of latency? Is it better because it performs specifically well on a range of tasks or is it for a specific task or is it just a vibe check or what, what exactly it is? And this basically highlights the importance of evaluating yourself. So you must always be evaluating yourself to really make a conclusion to what model is the one that's performing good for your use case. Um, I believe these models have very similar capabilities. They have very specific capabilities as well that they do really well. This is something that I've been experimenting and sharing online about. But I think it's interesting that they also find that the anthropic models, as everyone is arguing for online, that they are much better, especially Cloud 3.5 Sun is much better than the GPT-40. Anyways, I'm going to keep moving here. Um, this one is just top models for RAG applications. So if you are building a RAG application, here are some things to consider, right? So first, you're going to ask yourself, what is the best performing model? And I think the only way you can figure that out Obviously, this is good guidance because this will give you more or less an idea on what models to consider in your experimentation. But it depends on the requirements, right? If you want something that's cost efficient, you might go for a Gemini 1.5 Flash. If you want the best performing model, you don't care too much about cost because your use case, you know, maybe it's not going to scale or something like that. And the requirements are not really pushing you and you think you're not going to spend too much money, then maybe Cloud 3.5 Sun is, you know, your starting point. But then there's also like open source models if you care about privacy and all these different things. And you also maybe want to fine tune your model for your RAG application, then you know, you have a customizable model as well, which is Quint 272B. Now, I'm not sure if this report came out before Llama 3.1 release or after. So this is the only thing that I'm not sure. I need to kind of double check on that. But I think this is still interesting. Now, we see here that this these are all the different categories. So you can see that they have like for short context, which models perform best. And for medium context as well, which one was the best? Closed source model, it was Gemini 1.5 Flash. Seems this model is super competitive. It is appearing on all the different categories. The Gemini 1.5 Pro is as well, is appearing on all categories. And we know that Gemini 1.5 Pro now is the experimental version that came out yesterday is on top of the chatbot arena leaderboard, which is an important community leaderboard. And that's just telling you, right, how competitive this space is. But it was interesting that for a long context rag, which is a you know common use case as well that we have 3.5 Sonnet outperforming Gemini 1.5 Pro, right? But Gemini 1.5 Pro is more affordable as they show here. So these are just the overall winners. You know, the best model 
Cloud Triple Five Sonnet, Best Performance for the Cause, Gemini 1.5 Flash, Best Open Source Model, the Squint 72B Instruct. I wonder the Lama 3.1 70B Instruct, how this one performed. They do mention Lama 370B Instruct here, but I'm not sure if they're referring to the previous checkpoint or to the newer checkpoint that came out. That's the only thing I'm confused about. And these are just more like model performance. Here is a nice chart, right? Showing the evaluation metric and dollar per million prompt tokens, right? How it's scaling. Ideally, you want something like in this range here, right? So you don't want to pay too much money, for instance, for these tokens. You And you care about that. You want something more cost efficient. You will look at some models like here. But then if you don't worry too much about you know the cost, then you can select bigger models that are more expensive, but also have a high score and so on, right? So it has all the results here. You can interact with the graphic there, but I'm not going to go through all the details. There's even this kind of heat map as well that you can look at as the context length gets longer. How is this model performing, right? When you have the needle in the haystack evaluation. So here are some examples as well on the task. You can take a look at that. There are a couple of them. Again, I won't go through all those examples. I think you can do that on your own. And finally, there is some performance here. And you can even compare different models. So I can compare GPT-4.0, right? You can see it here. And you can compare it with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet here. On, and you have the checkpoint that they are talking about here. You can see how this one outperforms this one. But the, the performance difference is not so significant. But I think it's still interesting what they are showing here. And they also share some insights, right? You can see for the insights here, it's telling you how it's performing on certain benchmarks and so on. So all of this is amazing. I just wanted to do a video on this just to highlight there's a lot of interesting resources like this. I normally guide myself by the research that's happening in the space, but I love when companies release these type of reports because I want to see, first of all, what are the insights? I want to see also if, if it's aligning with what I'm thinking, my own perspective of how the models are performing and also the overall trends as well, which the trends as we spoke about are, I think, aligned with what I've been seeing as well. So you can get the full report here. There's even a more detailed report. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Galileo. Again, if you have any comments on this, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer any other questions that are related to hallucination or anything related to RAG. If you're working on a RAG use case, feel free to connect with me and I'll see you in the next one.